Hey, what's up guys? Stay patient here with my full Platinum Trophy Guide for everybody has gone to the Rapture. This was requested by my Patreon community, and if you'd like to get involved with choosing which games I make guides for, then check out the rewards on my Patreon page. It's no surprise that this was such a popular choice because it's a super easy Platinum that was free on PS Plus just a couple of months ago, and although there are plenty of guides for it already on YouTube, they all seem to either lack commentary, or they cover all the trophies in separate videos, making it much harder to 100% the game quickly and efficiently. So I set myself the challenge of trying to cover everything required for the Platinum in one video, and this is the fruits of my labour. The estimated completion time is 10 to 15 hours due to the very slow movement speed, but I managed to polish it off in less than 5 hours during this run, despite taking the time to ensure you're able to follow everything I'm doing. To make sure you don't get lost, I haven't removed any of the footage, but I have sped it all up by varying degrees, so hopefully this guide will get you through the Platinum nice and quickly too. We're going to be doing two playthroughs, the second will be covering Radio Enthusiast, Backtracker and Open Ended, so if you just need those trophies then go to the timestamp displayed on screen. This first playthrough will be dealing with everything else. The Completionist trophy involves triggering all of the story, that includes story events, some of which happen naturally when you get close enough, and others that are motion triggered. The motion triggered ones are indicated by a small light hovering around head height, and are activated by tilting your controller until you find the sweet spot, and briefly holding it in place. These motion events are the only things in the game that prompt an autosave, and there is no manual save. So if you want to quit out of the game, make sure you reach a motion event, then wait for the save icon in the bottom right of the screen. Completionist also includes telephones, radios, and TVs or monitors. You need to click on all of these with the X button, and there'll be some kind of audio or visual feedback letting you know that you have activated them. You don't need to hang around and wait for the events, radio broadcasts, or phone conversations to play out, just triggering them is enough. I did decide to wait for the motion events to end though, partly because they often turn the game very dark until they're finished, and partly to save confusion, because if you keep playing before the save is made at the end of the event, then I don't think it will have saved any collectibles you grabbed while the event was underway. So if the game crashes, you could forget which ones you have to redo, meaning it is best to wait for the save. On that note, although I've never had an issue, there have been reports of save file corruption if and when the game does crash so you may want to consider quitting out occasionally to back up your save to the cloud or an external hard drive, just in case. There are some other collectible style trophies we're going to cover too that don't require any interaction. The main ones involve reading all the bitten books for the bibliophile trophy, and the maps for the lost trophy. When it comes to these two, as well as some other trophies we'll mention along the way, you simply need to look at the items in question, and the game is very relaxed when it comes to registering each one. In fact, the bibliophile trophy unlocked as I entered the room containing the final book, so you don't need to stress too much about positioning when viewing these objects. There are of course other trophies that we'll explain en route, the first one being Passive Observer, which involves simply standing still and doing nothing for 10 minutes. That's why my character's just been stood here for a while to get that trophy out of the way, although I recommend you just wait until you need to take a break anyway, and simply leave your game unpaused for 10 minutes while you're AFK. I would do so after a save has been made though, just in case the game crashes. Okay, so there's the Passive Observer trophy for doing nothing for 10 minutes. I apologise for the long intro, but I wanted to make sure that everyone was well prepared for this, because we are going to be moving very quickly. Now this next trophy involves standing with your back up against the wall or any kind of surface, and basically trying to walk backwards for about a minute, so just hold down on the left analog stick, and that will pop the Moonwalker trophy. Now you can hold the R2 button to move quicker in this game, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it's so slow moving you do want to use it. Apparently though, some people have said that it glitches if you use it after a motion event but before the save has been made, so you might want to wait for the save icon to disappear in the bottom right corner of the screen, after those motion events. But there is the Moonwalker trophy, once we've earned that we can head inside this building, and we can activate the radio, and also the monitor on the desk, make sure to turn them both on, and then take a look at the map that's on the wall here, just kind of make sure you can see the whole map in your screen, and then we're going to carry on down the road. Now you'll hear a phone ringing on the right hand side, incidentally you'll also hear the radios from far away, there's like a weird sort of code that's repeated, uh, for some of the radios at least. 
but once you've activated the phone on the shopping trolley, you can make your way up the steps here, and this will be our first motion event. It will give us sort of on-screen prompts explaining how they work, but those prompts will disappear pretty quickly, so you'll be on your own for the rest of the game. Now I've skipped most of the event, but I do hang around for it because as you can see it turns the screen very dark because it sort of changes the time of day. But once that's finished it will open the gate for us and we can carry on through down these steps and you'll see a light appear and these lights kind of lead us but you don't want to always be following them. On this occasion we do follow it though because it's going to take us to the first proximity event up the road to the left hand side just near this barrier. So once you see the silhouettes appear, those two people that are kind of silhouetted in light, that's enough. You've triggered it, you don't need to hang around and wait for it to play out. So we're going to carry on down the road into Yorton, but just before the Yorton sign is a phone booth on the right hand side. Now we're going to enter here, and I can't remember if you need to press X on the phone to trigger the conversation or not, but it's worth pressing X anyway just to make sure it's registered. Now I've closed the door behind us because you need to stay inside this phone booth for three minutes for a miscellaneous trophy. That is the wrong number trophy if I remember correctly. So make sure you trigger the conversation and also stay in here with the door shut for three minutes. Obviously I've, I've uh, skipped most of the three minutes, I've sort of cut it, edited it out of the video. Um, that's the wrong number trophy though. And once we leave there are two books on the ground just outside the phone booth here make sure to look at both books. Those are the books that we're going to be looking out for for the bibliophile trophy. That's what they look like, sometimes they're upside down. But uh, as we make our way further along the road here, just next to the bus stop is another motion event. So of course I'm going to be pointing out all those books. Some of them are upside down so it's difficult to know that they're required, but I'll show you where they all are of course. Now once we've watched this event, we're going to head into this little shelter of the bus stop and look at the map on the wall, and also this chad. This is like a little drawing of a face to the right of the map. Take a look at that. There are five of those we need to look at for a trophy. Then we can head into the gate to the right of the bus stop, and then again into the gate into the garden here on the right-hand side. Now there's a radio to trigger, just next to the kind of deck chair in the middle of the garden. So make sure to turn that one on, you'll probably have heard it from a distance. And then we're going to head into the next door house here. The house next to the one we were just in. And we're going to go into the house for the first time. This is number three, you'll see the three next to the main door there. And in the room on the right hand side with all these red couches, there is an event that takes place, but also a TV you need to turn on. Now these events will just happen naturally but turn the TV on with the X button and then make your way into the build, or sorry, the room on the left hand side and there's a phone on that cabinet to the right. Press X on that to trigger the Ants phone message and then there's a book here on the shelf of the sort of bookshelf. So make sure to grab those. We are moving very quickly guys, I hope you're keeping up. Make your way into the kitchen now, the back room downstairs, and you want to trigger the microwave and make sure you hear it ding. It will make a typical microwave dinging sound and there are three of those microwaves in the game that we need to trigger. I think it's three. Anyway, we can now head upstairs and there is an open door or one that's sort of on a jar. And inside this room, there is a book on the little cabinet there to the left. And I think I noticed an event take place. Most of the events will just happen naturally because we're going to be going into the rooms where they take place anyway. If there are any that take place in other areas, then obviously I'll take you to those areas and we'll be activating everything as we go along. Anyway. Further up the road to the left hand side here is Yorton Stores and there's a prox sorry not a proximity event there is a motion event that we do need to tilt our controller for just outside the store here. This is going to kind of explain that weird paint pattern on the floor. It's a beautiful game it looks absolutely stunning so realistic and the lighting just adds like a, a different dimension to the graphical style. But once we've done that event, we can carry on up the road and you'll notice a turning here called Badger's Loft. We want to head up Badger's Loft and this is going to take us to the community centre. Now there's a map to the left of the main door leading into the community centre. So you want to take a look at that and then we're going to head into the room on the right hand side. And again, an event will take place in this room. So I actually got a bit confused here. I was trying to remember which door I had to go through. But uh, just ignore all these doors. The next room we need to enter is actually uh, sort of the right hand side room. This is the left hand side room. We want to head into the one on the right as you come in the main door. 
and it's actually through the double door just here. Now in this room is going to be the second microwave, so again, click on it and make sure it dings just to ensure that you've activated it. And then we're going to head out the rear door through the fire exit here, and there's a door along the back wall of the building that leads downstairs into the cellar, or I guess the basement, uh, through this little rickety old painted door here. Make your way downstairs and an event will take place on the stairs that will explain why the banister is broken there. There we go, so that event can play out on its own, that's fine. If we come back up the stairs and head out the gate to the rear of this building, just near us here, and then up the road to the right and through the next gate on the left hand side. This is the field with the tractor in. So make your way to where the tractor is and there will be a radio just next to it on a barrel. So if you look to the left from here, there is a white house, this is number 10, we're going to make our way into number 10 and I believe a event or an event triggers as we walk through the main door. And then if we make our way into the room on the right hand side, you want to trigger the television and also take a look at the book on the bookshelf, another one with a bird on. Now we can head into the room on the left hand side and there's a phone in the dark corner there, make sure not to miss that. Click on that and then also look at the book on the bookshelf in this room as well. This is sort of like a downstairs landing. Now we can head upstairs and there will be an open door on the right hand side and there will be another computer monitor in here that we can turn on. And now I think we can leave uh, number 10. Yet we're leaving the house and we're going to make our way back the way we came basically. In fact, we're not going to take the shortcut through the field. I mean, you could head through the field, but we're going to follow the road here and we're going to basically make our way past the community center. Now you'll notice some edits there where the time of day changes. That's just me editing the footage. Everything was done in one run, but occasionally, obviously I had to pause while I was recording. It is a 10 hour long platinum. <laughs> anyway, we're going to head into the garden of this house here. This is the next house along from the community center. You'll know it's the right one because it's got a football you know, a soccer ball in the garden. And there's a radio on the left hand side just next to that wheelbarrow. So make sure to, uh, to activate that one. Another edit there. Right, we're gonna leave out the front of the house, out the front gate and carry on up to the left. And the church here on the left hand side is gonna have an event that, that takes place if we sort of stand at the bottom of the steps. So trigger that one, then we can keep moving. And we're going to head into the building, sorry, like the home, the house, whatever you want to call it. It's not really a house anymore uh, because no one lives there. But head inside here. There's a bike inside that will be a kind of indicator that you're in the right location. And there's an event that takes place at the top of the steps just outside the front door. So now we can carry on down the road and there are going to be two brick houses on the left hand side here. And then there will be a white house just past them. Now the second brick house has a driveway there with a caravan in. There's the white house. But before the white one, we're going to head inside this driveway into the caravan and we are going to activate the radio. Now from here, we want to head uh, to the left again and we're going to be going inside the white house. Now this is number 16, you'll see it there on the front and there is a proximity, sorry, I keep saying that, there is a motion controlled event downstairs here. So you want to trigger that one and wait for that to play out. Now I think I was using R2 to run before the saves happened and I don't think I had any problem with the glitch I mentioned earlier, so you should be fine, but you might want to wait for the little icon in the bottom right, which you'll notice pop up in a moment. Anyway, once the event's finished, we can head upstairs and around to the right, there is a white phone. Now, some of these phones won't have messages. You just click on them and they'll make like a beeping sound like an answer phone does. So you want to do that with that one, you know, make sure that everything you click on makes some kind of sound just to confirm that you have done so. Anyway, opposite this house is a building on the left with a map on it. It's quite easy to spot there. And this is just next to this kind of garage area. So we want to walk past the garage on the right and into this double garage at the back and another event will take place in here and in the corner of the garage where the event is happening just on top of the box there is another book. So take a look at that and then we can leave. 
Now we're going to head to the right, carrying on round the way that we're, we were originally going. And we want to take the turning to the right here. Left carries on to the next area, but we're not finished here yet. We head to the right, and then on the left-hand side is this doctor's surgery. Now there is a trophy called hypochondriac, which involves going in and out of the doctor's surgery 10 times. Now if you want to make sure this works properly, it's worth going right up to the desk there, and then down the steps to the gravel. Now I've edited out most of these sort of in and out motions. Um, I've only shown you sort of three of them, I think, but you need to do this 10 times and hypochondriac will pop and then turn to your left and there'll be a book in the waiting room just on the table there. Take a look at that and then head into the room that's open on the right hand side and this will trigger an event. And there's also a monitor in here that you need to turn on. Now, if we exit the doctor's surgery, we can head around to the rear. There is a car park at the back, uh, just around the corner here. I almost forgot it for a moment, <laughs> but there's a car in the car park and this has a different type of phone in it that we need to activate. And this is, uh, it looks more like a radio or like a very, very old school mobile, but you need to activate that one. That's gonna play a conversation, I think. And then we can head into this house on the left-hand side it's got the red door with a kind of infinity sign painted on it. We want to go around to the rear. We can't enter the house, so we're going to go to the garden. And there's an event that takes place just close to this, uh, this swing, this kind of chair swing. So once we've triggered that, we're going to be heading towards the blue and white house in the distance. You'll see them there. There's a brick one on the right, then a blue one, then a white one. There we go. So if we exit the gate here and swing around to the left, we'll be going along a track to the rear of these houses and there'll be a gate on the right. We can head inside the gate here and this is like an alleyway that goes up between the blue and white house. We want to enter the garden of the blue house and head all the way to the back into the greenhouse. And there's a radio in here. Now, if we go back back out to the alleyway and carry on up through, you'll notice a park ahead of us, but we want to turn to the left. And on the left-hand side is a car park for the Stars Bar or the Stars Pub. There'll be an event that takes place here, just near that red van. Then we need to go into the sort of enclosed area of the pub itself and round the side to the beer garden. And we're going to activate the radio that sat on one of the tables here. And then we can head inside the actual bar itself. And what we're going to be doing is waiting at the bar for three minutes. So you want to just stand next to the bar and the trophy isn't going to pop here because we need to do this at the bar in Little Tipworth as well. So there are two bars. So it's definitely worth making sure you wait for at least three minutes. I wouldn't move your controller for that time just in case. I think you probably can. It's probably just a case of staying in this building for three minutes but just make sure it is at least three minutes because like I said this trophy isn't going to pop at this point so you won't know when it's been long enough so get a clock up or a timer or something and once you know that you've done three minutes we can exit back out the rear of the building and we are going to be heading for the park now you'll notice ahead of us there's a big tall sign that one there that we're looking at at the base of the sign is another map just facing away from us there. So you wanna take a look at the map. And then what we're gonna do is uh, go to this sort of cone-shaped ride here. You wanna kind of walk into it to knock it, to get it moving, and then walk around while you're on it. You basically need to ride this ride for two minutes while it's moving. So you're just gonna stay on it for as long as you need to for the trophy to pop. Now it's gonna pop any moment. Obviously I've cut out some of the, uh, some of the footage there. I think it should pop. <laughs> I thought I'd edited it down. There you go, perpetual motion. Now I hop off there and I headed for the wrong bench. The bench we need to go to is actually this one here. You should be able to find it. And uh, that's going to trigger an event when we get close to it. And then you can head to the left and we're going to be making our way towards the, uh, there's a white house on the right there. We need to turn to the left onto this little bridge that goes over the water and we're going to trigger the motion event on the bridge here.
There we go. Okay, so now we can turn around and there'll be a light that appears and this light is going to lead us to where we need to be. So follow it up. We're going to follow it up this road here, up this set of steps. And this is basically going to take us back to the church that we were at earlier. And there's going to be another proximity event here. Now, I thought it was a triggered event, so I stuck with it. That's why I've cut out the footage. But basically, follow that event all the way to the top, and you'll end up entering this church. Now, that's the only bit of footage I've actually cut out. But, you know, it's literally a one-way path. So head up to the church, and you can trigger the, the uh, motion-triggered event just in front of whatever that is, the table, the altar, whatever. And uh, that is basically the first area done. Now, originally I was thinking that I'd split this into multiple videos, but it ended up being nice and quick, so I've included it all in one video. But basically what you wanna do is go to the back of the church that you saw me go to there, you know, the door in the rear, and you'll notice all these lights on the floor. We're going to be following these lights until you reach this light here. Now you want to keep your eye out for that one and follow it basically because the lights on the floor will disappear. So we're going to follow this light that's flying around and this is basically leading us to the second area of the game. It's going to result in us reaching a house which is just in the distance there. You'll notice it behind the fence and that's the house we're heading for. That's number 19 and that's the first place you know, that's the first location we need to reach to be able to trigger some of the completionist events. So the light will lead us all the way there. You want to enter the gate and then enter the house itself. Number 19, as you can see on the wall there. Now on the right hand side, there's a book on the table just next to the binoculars. And then we want to head into the room on the left hand side and there'll be our first motion triggered event of this particular location. This is Tipworth Forest, if I remember correctly. Now, once the event is finished, there is another book just on the table here next to the lamp. Okay, so we can exit the house and we are going to make our way down to where the light is at the far end there. You'll see it flying around in the distance. And as we reach the road, you'll notice a map that's the next map that we need to look at for the lost trophy. So it's literally right in front of us as we leave the driveway for that home, that house that we just left. Now behind the map is another house. And if we sort of hang around outside, there's gonna be another event that triggers. There we go. And then we're going to head into the gate, heading through the gate here. And on the left hand side is a tree house. We want to climb up into the tree house. You don't need to press anything to climb the ladder. Just walk up to it. And there's a radio in the tree house here. So that's the only thing we need there. Just trigger that. And then we're going to climb back down the ladder. Now in the back garden, if we go through the gate here into the rear garden here, there's another book just on the bench, just round the corner along the rear of the house itself. Then we're gonna carry on down the path out the bottom gate here, or the bottom archway. And down this track to the left, you'll notice another map. There's kind of a picnic area here. You want to look at this map and, uh, yep, that's all we need to do in that particular little location. So once you've done that, we're gonna literally head back the way we came back up through the garden of the house, uh, number 20, I think this is, and then turn right, and we're gonna carry on down the road through this area. And on the right-hand side, you'll notice a car, and you'll hear a phone ringing. Now, I actually went to the wrong part of the car. I tried to find the phone in the door here, but it's actually on the bonnet or the hood of the car. So make sure to activate that phone. Then we're going to turn around and make our way towards this white house here. But rather than going to the house itself, we want to carry on around to the right. You can actually enter this area from the main road as well, but I took this, this route. And on this desk here with all the, like the radios and the saw and the big engine there on the right, there is a phone sat on top of the radio. You want to activate that one. And then we're going to carry on down the road. And I think into this next house, yeah, this next house, has a proximity event that will start as soon as we sort of set foot on the driveway. 
but there's nothing else in that house that we need. So we're going to carry on down the road. And the next, uh, there's a sign there just on the left, you'll notice. Uh, yeah, there's a gate here on the left just after that sign. And you'll see the event taking place before you even reach it. So that's how you'll know you're in the right place. You basically want to follow this event down and cross over the water here over these planks. And the event will sort of carry on. I think this is a separate event, but it's all part of the same thing. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's a while since I recorded this. <laughs> anyway, I think I got a bit confused here. I was trying to rem uh, remember where I was going. But you do need to basically carry on all the way up this pathway. And there's a kind of area with lots of tables, an eating area. And you'll notice uh, we've got a map that I decided to look at first before triggering this proximity. Uh, <laughs> before triggering this motion event. I keep saying proximity, I apologize guys. Anyway, trigger that event and once it's over, there is on this table here with the beer on it, find the table with the beer, just to the right of it, you probably can't see it, but there's a chad there. Just look to the right of the beer, look carefully and you'll notice a chad. That is the little face that's drawn on. And I'm gonna keep it here for a moment. Ah, okay, that's it. <laughs> but you can rewind and take a look. Just make sure you look at that, it's pretty forgiving but that's the chad for this area. There's one chad in each area and they're quite hard to find. Now we can leave, you know, down through the road here that leads up to that area we were just in. And at the bottom of this road is a bus stop with a radio on the bench there. It's uh, one of the more simple bus stops, you know, just a bench and a sign basically. Now, as we carry on up the road, we'll cross a bridge and another event will take place on the bridge itself. And then what we want to do is not take the pathway down to the water there, but take the path up to the left. And this is going to go past the power station type area on the right there and up to a sort of memorial statue type thing. So there's benches and there's some flowers laid at the bottom of that statue. And this is going to trigger another event. So we can carry on back down to the road again and carry on in the direction we were heading. There'll be a van ahead of us, that white van there. Just to the left of the van is an open gate. We wanna head through this gate and up the steps. Now, there's a trophy up here for looking at the numbers on five different train uh, carriages. So there's one to the left here, 6EQUJS. Make sure you take a look at that. Then the next one, RA192531. Take a look there. We don't need to remember these, but it's just a case of looking at them. There's another one, 265720. So there's four basically here, uh, all in a row. I think there's six in total, actually. Sorry, I said five, but there is an event here. Make sure you don't miss this motion triggered event. It's just between the third and fourth uh, carriages here. The final one being RA192822. Okay, so they're the first four, and once we've done them, we can run down the tracks here, and there'll be another code on the right-hand carriage out of these two, and you need to kind of go between the two carriages to be able to look at it, 1420M55. There we go, so once we've done those five, there's one more near the end of the game, so the trophy won't pop yet, but if we turn around and head up these steps to the right-hand side into the top level of this kind of I guess it's a lookout or maybe switching station. There's an event that will take place, but also you need to take a look at the map on the right hand side as you enter this room. Make sure not to forget that because, you know, once you've triggered the event, you might think that's it. But trigger the event and look at the map. And now we're going to head all the way back the way we came, all the way back past these four carriages. Uh, you can actually exit down to the road further up you know you don't need to go back all this way but i did go this way because it's a bit easier to get your bearings if you carry on from where you left off so we're going to carry on down the road and just before this bridge here you want to turn to the right and follow the track here there's some water there on the left and uh as you get to the light's kind of flying away from us at the moment but as you get to the bench here there will be a motion triggered event that you want to make sure to activate. Once that's done, you're basically going to follow the fence on the right hand side. Ignore the path at the moment. You're going to follow the fence all the way around and there'll be a map 
just there. It's pretty obvious the maps, they show up a mile away. Once you've taken a look at that, there's another map very close by. So if we carry on up the path here, you can kind of push your way through all this bracken. And uh, this, where this life preserver is, on the other side is another map. So they're very close to each other. Make sure to take a look at both of those. Now, if we go back to the road and carry on going, there's going to be a house on the right hand side with an open garage just to the left of it. So this is number 23 and in the garage to the left, there is one of the silver radios that we mentioned earlier. So when, when we're doing radio enthusiasts, we want to ignore those silver ones, but don't worry, I'll take you, take you to all the ones you need to do. Opposite that house is another house with all these beehives in the garden. Now at the back, you know, amongst all the beehives is another radio on these cinder blocks. And then we're going to be making our way into the house itself. And I think this is 24, if I remember correctly. So once we've entered, you want to head into the room on the right hand side and turn on the television. And then we're going to head through the door on the left and upstairs. And we're going to enter the only room that's open with the telescope inside. Now you want to close the door behind you because there is a book hidden away that you can't see if the door is open. So close the door and take a look at the book just behind the radio there. Now this radio, you can't activate yourself. But if you wait for this event to play out, the characters here, uh, Stephen, will turn the radio on for us. Now, I'm not sure if that's required, but, you know, it's not a hardship, <laughs> so you might as well do it. I mean, you wouldn't want to complete the game and realize that you should have done it. Anyway, once we've done that, carrying on down the road, you'll see this sort of broken down car with flashing lights on the left hand side. There'll be an event inside. Make sure to trigger the event and then head into the house itself. And here we have another microwave to activate. So that's the microwave in the kitchen. Then there's a book on the table in the room on the right, the sort of living room area. Make sure to look at that book and then head upstairs. And we're going to head into the open room here. There is a radio on the seat. And then if we turn around, you'll notice two monitors. You can only turn one of them on. I believe it's the bottom one. I also decided to look at the map there. Take a look at that. I don't think that's required for the trophy, but just in case, you know, have a look at it. Make sure to center it in your vision. As we come out the bottom, you know, as we get downstairs, we're gonna leave through the rear door, the blue door that's open in front of us. This takes us to the garden, but you don't want to trigger the, uh, tr you know, the motion event just yet because it will turn everything dark and make it hard to find this book. So make sure to look at the book on the bench there I'm sorry, we're moving very quickly, so hopefully you're able to see everything that I'm talking about. But there's a bench in this garden. You could probably look at the book while this event's playing out, but when it finishes, it gets very dark as it has here. So it would be difficult to find the book and maybe it wouldn't count because, you know, it's too dark for you to be able to see it properly. Anyway, this is the end of the Tipworth Forest section. So we are going to follow the lights once again, and it's going to lead us to the third section. I forget what it's called, but it's like basically farmland. This, uh, this game looks very much like locations that are all around me. I, I live in a county that is pretty much identical to this. So those of you who like the countryside and like the, uh, the look of this game, this is pretty much where I live. I'm sort of on the outskirts of a town, uh, but very close to areas like this. Anyway, as we follow the light here, eventually it will become light, become daytime, and there will be a map just ahead of us, very difficult to miss. And then we can make our way back down to the road and across the turnstile straight ahead of us into this field with the tractor. And there's going to be an event that there's going to be an event that takes place just next to the tractor there. Then we can carry on up the pathway and over another turnstile. There we go. And if we turn to the left, you'll notice the tree in the distance, a big tree right in the middle of the field. Now we want to make our way there through all the uh, corn or whatever it is here. Or maybe it's wheat. I think it's a wheat field. And there's going to be a motion triggered event here just at the base of the tree. Now, once we've done that, we are going to make our way to the back of the field just along the back edge where the fence is, you'll notice a blue tarpaulin on the right there. Carry on round, following this path, and eventually you will cross a sort of plank 
across the water here. And there is a picnic, uh, picnic area with a tent and everything. So there's a radio and a book. You'll pretty much be looking at the book while you're triggering the radio, but just kind of center the book in your vision and make sure to turn the radio on as well, and then carry on along the path. Now, you'll notice on the right hand side here, another map that we need to take a look at. There we go, nice and easy. And then there'll be a caravan just outside a big sort of derelict barn here. We want to make our way inside the caravan and that's going to trigger, actually no, it's a motion event in the caravan. So make sure to tilt your controller and trigger this one. Oh, trying to get my breath. Okay, so to the right of that barn and just next to this blue tarpaulin is a gap in the hedge. And just to the back of this area is another turnstile. So if we follow this path all the way up, there's going to be a right hand turn. We'll get to this place here with a sign for the public footpath to the right. There's also going to be an event that triggers as we walk past it. But if we turn to the right and follow this path until we hear a radio, in fact, I'm not sure if we hear this one because I think this may be one of the silver ones. Yes, it is. I don't think this one makes a sound, but just keep your eye out on the right hand side. There's a little alcove with a bench on it with that silver radio sat on the bench. Then we can make our way back up the path and we're going to head left again, which is going to take us back the way we came. Okay, so back over the turnstile here. And this is the, the barn again. We're going to head up another path, which is very similar to the one we just took. Uh, but it's to the left hand side of the barn this time. So over this turnstile, we want to head all the way up to the top. And if I remember correctly, there is going to be an event on the left hand side. The, the light should kind of hover around this area to indicate where you need to go. But if it's not there, just find the bench on the left and make sure to trigger that event and then carry on along the path here. We're going to eventually cross the water again and you'll notice a barn just ahead of us, this big barn here. Now we're gonna head inside this barn and you'll notice a ladder, that's what we need to climb. So head up the ladder and there's going to be a radio just at the top on the left hand side there. So we can climb back down the ladder once you've triggered the radio and then head around to the right here and walk along the side of the barn. And this pathway is going to eventually lead us. If you stay to the right hand side, just keep going right until you are able to enter the rear of this house. So through these trees here, sort of pretty open their back garden. And there's a shed in the garden. You want to head inside the shed and there's gonna be another orange radio here to trigger. So you should hear that one on your way up through that pathway. Now we can head inside the building and in the room to the right hand side are two books on the kind of uh, the cabinet here, uh, just next to the lamp. Make sure to take a look at both those books and then head into the room opposite. And uh, we're gonna head upstairs and there'll be a room with the door sort of partially open here. And this is going to be our next uh, motion controlled event. Now, once this one's finished, we are going to head back downstairs and uh, let's have a look, which way are we going? I think we're going left here. Yes, we want to head out the opposite way to where we came. So we're gonna head out the back of the house and then, actually no, sorry, this is the front of the house. We went in the back and then out the front. Now in the barn that's just opposite the house here, if we head inside, there'll be an event. There we go. And now what we want to do is head up the road to the right. This is sort of back to where we first started pretty much. That's the cornfield on the left with the big tree in the middle. And if we make our way all the way up the road and keep your eye out for a gate on the right hand side that leads into a field with another barn in. This gate here, this sort of large, uh, this large gate you want to open and then head to the left, just to the left of the gate as you enter will be the next radio that you should have heard on your way up. 
Now we're going to make our way up to the barn in this field. And I believe there is an event in here. Yes, an event triggers as we pass the first part of the barn. And then there is one other item. Now, it's just near that seat that has no legs, just on the floor there. I was getting a bit confused for a moment, but just here you've got the seat with no legs with a Rubik's Cube on it, and there's a book just next to it. So make sure to take a look at that book before we head on up the pathway. And this path, I believe, is going to lead us to another event, which will automatically trigger. Falls off his bike there. <laughs> it's very interesting keeping track of the story. Anyway, if we follow this pathway all the way along, keeping the fence to our left here, there will be another map at the far end. There we go. So we're going to jump over the turnstile just to the right of the map. And there's a big barn on our right. We're going to be, I think, heading for this barn, actually. I almost forgot that we needed to go here. But if we head into the barn right at the back, I believe is our next motion triggered event. There we go, there's the light sort of hovering around. So we're going to activate this one. And once that's played out, we can just turn around and leave this barn. I don't think there's anything else here. I guess it's more of a uh, stable than barn, isn't it? Anyway, we can leave back uh, all the way down the field, back to the road again. And I believe we're going to turn to the right first. Yes, so turn to the right, and we're going to be walking quite a long way down this road. This is almost taking us back to where we were with the white house and the barn at the corner. You'll recognize it when we get there. We're not going to be going all the way down, but part way down the road, there will be a, an event that will trigger. So just make sure to activate that one. Then we can just head all the way back up to where we were before. This is the direction we'll be taking when leaving this area. But we want to go to the car that's been left there on the left hand side, the blue car. That's going to trigger another event. And then if we carry on up the road a little bit further, there'll be a map on the right hand side. So take a look at that. Now, before carrying on, we need to make our way back down to the car and into this field here. Just opposite the car on the other side of the road, we're going to make our way into the field. This is a big wheat field. And before the gate on the right hand side, or you know, before the gate straight ahead of us, there is a van, a blue van with a radio need to trigger. And also here is the chad on the side of the van. So make sure to look at the chad and activate the radio before heading on through the gate. And this will take us to another barn here with a tractor to the right hand side and a motion triggered event just in front of the tractor. Now we're going to let this one play out, but we're not watching the whole thing. You can notice there that I've edited some of it out. Once it's finished though, we can carry on up the field past, you know, past the barn in the direction we were heading. We're going to be making our way towards the windmill at the top of the hill, just so you can get your bearings. Now, if we follow this path after jumping the turnstile, at the very top, there is going to be, I believe, a map and an event. Okay, so we are going to look at the map first, again, for the same reason as last time, because the event, I think it makes everything very dark. So look at the map first before triggering this motion event. And then you can watch this one out. And this is going to be the ending of the third section or the third story. There are only really five stories. There are six technically, but the sixth one is very, very quick. And it's not really, I mean, it's just the ending basically. So we're kind of three fifths of the way through our initial playthrough, which is pretty cool. But once this event has finished, you'll have all the lights show up again and you can follow that to the next area. We're gonna be making our way for the uh, what is it? The holiday camp. It's all like caravans and uh, tents and everything. Again, it's very typical of the county I live in. You know, the holiday park looks exactly like all the holiday camps around here. Um, all the ones down near the near the coast, near the sea. And this actual countryside. Literally, you can drive for about two minutes from my house and you'll be in locations just like this. It's pretty cool. Anyway, this is the entrance to the holiday camp. 
and you'll notice our first uh, motion triggered event is right in front of us as we enter. So find the sweet spot and get that triggered. So this is Lakeside Holiday Camp. We're basically going to be doing an, a clockwise circle around this whole area. But before we do that, obviously, we're going to take a look at the map on the left hand side here. I doubt you'd miss that one. <laughs> Very obvious. Then if we make our way into the building on the right hand side, this I think is a post office. There is a phone here up on the wall, just like straight ahead of us as we enter. Make sure to trigger that and then turn around on yourself. And there are three books on the table. Now I looked at them from multiple angles just to make sure it registered all three. But like I said, it's pretty, it's pretty relaxed when it comes to that. Now straight ahead of us across this sort of roundabout is the main hall. So to the left of the main hall, just off the roundabout here is our next map that we need to take a look at. And then if we carry on down this road to the left of the map, there'll be an event that triggers uh, if we enter this car park on the left, there's a green and blue car. Sorry, a green car and a blue car, not a car that's green and blue at the same time. <laughs> um, unless you're colorblind, which I am, ironically. Anyway, once you've triggered that event, you can carry on around the road here and we're going to enter the first caravan on the right hand side. This is Lizzie Graves caravan and this story is, is all about Lizzie basically. Now we're going to trigger the motion triggered event in this caravan and just to mention that in this area oh there's a tv as well make sure to trigger the tv in this caravan now in this area we're going to be trying to break into all of the caravans some of them will open some of them won't but when you do it you need to make sure you hear a noise to indicate that you are trying to open the door anyway on our way to the tennis court just on the left you'll notice this area with two uh, BMX's and a little ramp there. You want to trigger the radio that's just lent against one of those ramps. Now on the cage or on the fence uh, lining the tennis court is another map. So take a look at that. And then just turn back, you know, face the opposite way and behind us is a bench with another book on it. Now we're going to make our way into the actual tennis court through this gate here and in the court on the right there'll be a event an event I should say that triggers and then we can leave the tennis courts and we're going to be making our way into the little building here on the left hand side I forget what this is but uh, there's going to be an event that takes place as we get outside the building just outside the blue door there sorry about the sirens anyway carry on along the road and take the first path down to the left that leads to a bunch of caravans now these are some of the caravans that we need to break into. We're not actually going to be able to unless it is unlocked. But like I say, some of them, uh, there are four here. There are 24 in total, if I remember correctly. Some of them, you know, they might not trigger. You need to kind of move around. You need to find the sweet spot because pressing X might not trigger it. Now, you want to make sure to have your sound on for this section because you're going to hear the door rattle as you try and open it. Now the last one here is open. You do need to open it partly for that trophy for trying to break into the caravans and partly because there is a motion controlled event inside. Now, once we've done that, we can make our way back up to the road. So follow the little pathway. This is a different one to the one we took to enter that area. But once you reach the road, just opposite will be another map. Very clear to see there. And then to the left is a phone booth. So we are going to, uh, you know, open this door and the conversation is going to play automatically. But again, I do recommend pressing X on every phone just in case. But this building here on the right hand side, this big building is actually the main hall that we saw earlier. So we're going to enter this main hall and there are some books on the table in the corner just to the left there. There are two. In fact, I think there are three because the yellow one, I believe, in fact, they may all be books that we need because some of them are, are upside down. So just take a look at them all from different angles to make sure they trigger. And then there's another book in the main hall here. This is where they all gathered. There's a book just there in the middle of the room, just in front, that, front of those blue crates. Now, I looked around because I thought there was another one. That's why I sped up that footage quite a lot. Anyway, we can leave the main hall and go back the way we came. So carry on around to the left. And there's going to be a building on the right hand side. This is the laundrette or the washer room. 
there's going to be an event that takes place, but just behind one of the characters, you know, that uh, is involved in the event, sorry, uh, there is another Chad. So hopefully you saw that there. Make sure to look at the Chad. That's the Chad for this location, for the holiday park. And there's also a book there. So I'm getting behind. There's a book uh, just on the washer machine next to the door. Now, if we leave the room and head opposite to this area with all the caravans, there are some more caravans we need to try and break into. So there's one here. There's one just opposite between these two orange tents. This one we can actually enter. So we're going to enter this and trigger the radio. And then there's another one just opposite uh, on the far side. I think there's three in this location, This in this sort of little enclosed field. Now, once we've done those, we can head past these tables here towards the football court. Um, I guess you'd call it soccer, most of you. If we enter this, just next to the goal on the left-hand side is another event. Now, uh, if we leave this, we are going to head... I'm trying to remember here. I'm getting a little bit lost. <laughs> oh, yeah. We head back up to the road. And then just opposite is another building. I think this is a washroom or a toilet. And there's a map just on the right hand side on the outside wall there. Now we can head past these benches and towards this kind of fireplace area and we're going to trigger the uh, around this campfire there is another motion control event. Now I just want to reiterate because I did get behind a bit earlier in that laundrette room earlier there is a book and a chat and an event just make sure to grab all of those. Now, if we make our way to this kind of painting area where they're painting these vases, underneath one of the vases are three books. Now, I looked at them from both angles just to be sure. Now, from here, if we head up to the right hand side, you'll see in the distance all these orange tents, but in the distance, there's a yellow one. If we walk past the yellow one, we'll get to a new location or new kind of collection of caravans. I believe there's four in this area. So there's one there, one just behind it. These are slightly different to the other ones. They're smaller ones, a bit like the trailer that we went into uh, during the farming section just near that derelict barn. I'm rambling now. That's not important. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's an event that takes place next to this third caravan. And then an event, uh, sorry, another caravan at the far end here. I don't think any of these open. So just make sure you do hear them rattle and then we are going to make our way back to the road and carry on to the left. And there's a map just ahead. You'll see it there on the right hand side. So take a look at the map and then we're going to head up a pathway just to the right um, of the map. And at the junction here where it turns right and left, there is another event that triggers. And then we can, you know, we don't have to follow this path any further. We can go back to the main road. And from here, I believe we're going to go to the right again, past the map that we looked at a moment ago, and then take the first left. And this is another collection of caravans. So there's one on the right here that we need to try and break into. And then opposite, we've got another two. I think there are four here. So that's the second one. Uh, in fact, there's five. There are five. So make sure to try and break into all five of these trailers. I'm just taking a moment to try and catch up with my notes here because it's the video is moving a lot quicker than uh, I had realized. You know, I, I set it up to kind of speed up a lot of the footage, but trying to commentate it is uh, proving quite a challenge. Anyway, the fifth and final trailer or, or caravan is going to have a radio in. So the only caravan that you can enter does have a radio inside. Now we're going to make our way back to the main road and just opposite us is another collection of three caravans. So this is on the sort of inside of the corner. The road uh, turns around and sort of circles this location. So there are three caravans here and you'll know it's the right place because there is a radio on a table in the center. So if we turn around, you'll notice a table with a red and white umbrella. And there's a radio there that we do need to activate. Now, if you turn to the left, that's where we came in. We're going to head out this way and straight across. And this is the last collection. This is the final collection of caravans. Now, one of them will open, but won't have anything inside. That first one on the right, you don't need to head inside, uh, but it does count for the caravan based trophy. 
because some of them will let you break into them, some of them won't. This is called like T something or other, I forget the name of it. <laughs> um, but I think this is the last one, yeah, tea leaf. Okay, so we're gonna head to the bottom of this area. You'll see a gate at the end of the road there, but we want to head to the right first. You've got like a bit of a gazebo with a barbecue and just in front of this little shed with the fence and everything and the red and white umbrella, uh, the keep out sign, <laughs> there is a motion triggered event. Now, once you've done that event, we can head through the gate that I showed you a moment ago and just follow along where the water is and there'll be a map on the right hand side. Once we've taken a look at the map, we are going to head out onto the rocks here towards the water and there's going to be another event with a couple of the kids, I believe. And once we've done that, we can exit all the way back up, you know, through the gate, past all the caravans, another siren, a lot of crime today, crumbs. <laughs> And then as we get back to the main road, straight ahead of us is another set of uh, bathrooms, I think, or showers or whatever, and there's a map on there. So look at the map on that building, and then we're gonna head back the way we came originally, and we're gonna get to this park on the right-hand side just for another event. We kind of bypassed this because we went to the uh, collection of caravans on the inside of this corner in the road. So you see the road sweeps around. We were on the inside first, so we had to come back and just grab that event in the, in the playground, in the park area. Now we're gonna carry on around in our clockwise fashion and on the left hand side is a pool. Now there was something in the building to the right that we just walked past. We're gonna to have to go back and get that. But in the building, in the changing rooms of the swimming pool, there is another event. This is just one of the proximity events so you can leave it to play out. Now, as we get back to the main road, just to the right here, you've got another map. So this is just next to the swimming pool. And then we're gonna make our way back to the building that I accidentally walked past. So if we enter this one through the door on the left, there'll be an event around to the right. There we go. And now we can leave and carry on around the area. Okay, so if we carry on up the road, eventually we're gonna make our way back to the main hall again. So this is another full circle we've done, and we're going to make our way back into the main hall, and this is actually going to complete this area as well. We're getting through this game pretty darn quickly, thanks to the sped up movement, of course. Or should I say the sped up footage? Now, this is gonna be the final uh, motion triggered event just up on stage or just in front of the stage. And like I say, this is going to finish off the lakeside uh, lakeside uh, holiday park or whatever it's called. Alrighty, so that actually finishes off the area. So we are going to leave and find some more lights again. Now we can follow these lights. They are going to take us up a pathway. This is the way we came in, but we're sort of veering off the main road here. And this is going to lead us to the road that eventually takes us to Little Tipworth, which is the final main area in the game. Now along this road, there is going to be a phone booth on the left hand side. Now it's quite difficult to see because it is dark as we walk past it, although it will become light around the same time. So just look out for this corner where it sort of sweeps around to the right hand side. If you kept walking, you would miss this phone booth. So when it starts getting light, that's kind of a, an indication as to the fact that there will be a phone there. So if you've walked past it, turn around once daytime uh, you know, comes back, once it gets back to being light and sunny, just turn around and grab the phone, make sure you press X on it. And then as we walk past this van here, there's gonna be a proximity event inside. And then just past it on the left of the road is our first map of Little Tipworth, or at least first map in Little Tipworth. Now you'll notice on the right hand side, you've got this big building, big warehouse, four leaves. Now we're going to head inside here and the final chad is going to be on the lorry to the left. So just on the side of the lorry, take a look at that one and you'll get the graffiti artist trophy. Now we're gonna head inside the warehouse and right in the back, there is going to be a kind of checkout desk 
and a phone just to the left there. Trigger the phone, that's all you need to do in Forleys. Now once we leave Forleys, you'll see a house ahead of us with scaffolding all around the outside. Um, <laughs> this house is obviously under construction. And sorry, I'm laughing at the fact that I'm getting uh, getting my words slurred a bit. I haven't been drinking, honest. <laughs> anyway, we're going to head inside this house. Hopefully it's safe. <laughs> and in the room on the right hand side is our first, uh, our first motion triggered event. Now, once that's finished, I think that's all we need to do in here. So we're going to leave the house and head back to the road. Now, if we leave out through this gate, the left hand gate, you'll notice a bus stop ahead of us and there'll be a map on the back of the bus stop. This is just to the left of Forleys there. There'll be a radio as well. So trigger the radio on the, de um, on the bench, sorry, and then look at the map. So now we can carry on down the road and eventually you'll come to a phone on the left hand side. This is another phone booth. So head in there. These are the typical like British phone booths, uh, almost like Doctor Who style, I suppose, but red. And then we want to head up the path just to the right of the phone booth up to this house, which is number 45. And we can head inside here again into the room on the right, which is shut, but we can open it. And there's a TV in here that we need to turn on and also a book on the floor or sort of just in this box that's on the floor. So make sure to look, look at the book and also trigger the television. And then if we make our way into the back of the downstairs floor, around to the left here, we've got another phone on the desk and also a monitor. So there's lots of items in this house. Make sure you don't miss any. Rewind if you need to. Now we can head back down the driveway that we came up. And from here, we're going to head into the bar, the pub that's just opposite us. So keep walking straight and you'll come to the entrance of the seventh whistler. Now in the garden, in the front garden, if you head around to the left on one of these tables here next to a glass is another book that we can look at. And then we're going to head inside. There you go. The sign seventh whistler. These are very typical of the pubs around this area, at least, you know, out in the rural, uh, the rural areas nearby. There's another event in this pub that will happen automatically. And then we're gonna finish off the trophy that we started earlier for waiting at the bar for three minutes. So we need to do this at both pubs, the Stars and also the Seventh Whistler, and that will pop the Last Orders trophy. Obviously you need to wait longer than I did, or at least longer than I showed on the video. Uh, it's three minutes at each bar. So if it doesn't pop when you stay at this one, you might need to make your way all the way back to the first one in Yorton. Uh, but you'll be able to use the shortcuts which we'll be going through a bit later anyway but if you carry on up the road there's going to be a map on the left hand side and then we're going to walk past that overturned box and just sweep around to the right here go underneath this bollard past the road close sign and this is the railway station or the train station now there is a map on the building. We're going to grab that in a moment, actually. So this is the main building, the main train station building. If we go around to the right now, I almost forgot the number on the train. This is the final train for the train spotter trophy. Now the trophy still popped and that just goes to show that you don't need to be right next to it, looking directly at it, but that is the number there. Make sure to look at that train and make sure the trophy pops. If it doesn't go back and look at the other trains again. Now I've walked over this kind of uh, walkway over the railway because there's supposed to be an event here. Now it actually triggers when you get to this sort of location. So when you come into this area, I recommend just turning right straight away and walking towards the ladder or towards the stairs. Either way, you know, just make sure that event does trigger and make sure you look at the number on the side of the train. And now we're going to take a look at this map that I mentioned earlier, just on the building. Now we can head inside and there's going to be our next uh, motion triggered event here. Now once this event finishes, uh, it actually stays dark for longer than usual. So I've left it until it gets light again so I can show you everything. To be honest, you need to wait till it's light because you won't be able to see anything anyway. But if we uh, cross the tracks again, 
Just opposite, next to the blue crate here, there's an orange book upside down. So that's easy to miss because you can't see the front. It doesn't look like a bird book. Now to the right of that, there's a case with a book lent up against it just under that bench. So make sure to grab both of those books. One of them's upside down and orange. One of them's lent up against the sort of suitcase. Now we're going to leave back to the main road and carry on along in the direction we were going. There's some steps on the right hand side here. If we sort of climb these steps a little bit, it will trigger an event and then we can just carry on walking in the same direction. So as we get down here, we are going to turn left into the car park of this gas station or petrol station. And just to the right, next to this little kind of shed, is a radio on a blue crate. And just behind it, you can probably see on screen already, there is another book just on the chair there. Now if we make our way towards the building itself, there's also a cafe here. This is Holly's Cafe. Now if we head inside, there is a map straight ahead of us. Oh, sorry, no, not ahead, it's to the right. So shut the door just to make sure you can see it all. This is just in the kind of entrance way to Holly's Cafe. And just to the left of it is another phone. So click on that and make sure you trigger the conversation. And then inside, we also have a television on the, uh, the counter, just next to all the prices there up on the blackboard. So three items there to make sure you grab and then when we leave the cafe, we can head around to the left and we'll end up on this small kind of track. It's not really a, well, I guess it is a road, but either way, we're gonna be making our way to this big warehouse here. I think it's uh, Valley Farm Wholesalers. But before going to the warehouse, we need to enter the shop itself just to trigger another event. And once we've done that, I think you might be able to go behind this lorry. I went all the way around it thinking it was blocked off, but either way, just make your way towards uh, this warehouse. And once you get inside, there'll be another motion event just on the right hand side there. Getting near the end of the game already, guys. This is going nice and quickly. Like I said, this whole playthrough, both playthroughs in fact combined, took me about five hours total. So most people take between 10 and 15. So hopefully this guide should get you through it a lot quicker. Anyway, we're gonna leave the wholesalers and carry on around to the left up to this house, this white house on the left hand side. This is going to have some items in as well as a miscellaneous trophy. I believe this is number 42. We'll soon notice, there you go, yep, yeah, number 42. So in, yep, <laughs> took the time to show you. In the room on the right hand side, now this is where the bibliophile trophy popped without me even looking at the book just because I was in the vicinity of it. But there are the books in the corner. Make sure to look at them and make sure your bibliophile trophy pops. Also, there's a TV, so turn the TV on, and a red phone in the corner. So this room is jam packed with items we need to interact with. So the books, the phone, and the TV. Now we can make our way into the back room, which is the kitchen again, and we're going to activate our final microwave for the ready meal trophy. So again, make sure that one pops. And now we're going to head upstairs. Now this is the location in the middle room here. This is the location of the miscellaneous trophy. What we need to do is trigger the train set and we are going to basically wait. I've, I've edited it, it, I've edited it there, so, but uh, eventually that's going to trigger the Howard's train trophy. You need to hang around and watch it for two minutes, I believe. Anyway, when we leave the house, we can carry on up the road to the left, and this is going to end up back at the railway track, and this is all boarded off, you know, there's quarantine basically. But on this barrier, just ahead of us, is a radio just next to the kind of truck. So make sure to grab that radio and then we're gonna head all the way back down the way we came. So we're going past the wholesalers on the right and then we've got uh, the cafe on the left, but we're gonna take the right hand turning here. Rather than carrying on the, up the road, we do need to turn right and we're gonna pass the cafe and the petrol station and carry on down this road now there will be an event that takes place at this bench here just on the right hand side this is unavoidable if you walk down this road and you'll notice the map on the left as well so make sure you take a look at that and this is the final map in the game so that's the lost trophy 
we're getting a nice lot of trophies popping. Now I edited there, but we're still going in the same direction. So we're gonna walk all the way down this road that we were already walking down and we'll get to a tractor on the right hand side. We want to head into the buildings just in front of us with the kind of almost like a garage door opened. And in this enclosed little room, we have another phone. So make sure to trigger that phone and then we're going to leave the way we came and we're looking for a path on the right hand side. Now there's a sign facing away from us, this sign just here on the right. This is the one, uh, what does it say? It's uh, Tipworth and Haverton. Now there's a path just past that sign and you'll notice the, uh, the motion event just a little way up the path here. So you can trigger that one. And this is one of the last motion events in the game. This one's a bit of a longer one than some of them. So, you know, we're going to wait for it to finish because as you can see, it's very dark, but you'll notice some of the, well, you notice all the light kind of streaking across the sky that's coming through the power lines. And that's basically showing us where we need to go. So once it gets back to daytime, we are going to walk up this pathway along the fence and head into this area here. Now this is basically the final area of the game, but before we head into the bunker, we're gonna head along to the right here under this kind of makeshift roof. And we're going to grab the final radio, or at least the final radio before we head into the bunker. And uh, you'll notice all the lights kind of leading us towards this door here. So this is the point of no return. Don't head into this bunker until you've got all of the trophies except for completionist, the end for completing the game, and also the three trophies we mentioned at the beginning, Radio Enthusiast, Open Ended, and Backtracker. You should have all the miscellaneous trophies and all the collectible based trophies like the maps and the, uh, the books and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I've skipped us forward because we just walk down a long corridor here and eventually we'll make it into a room and there is another motion event, but this is a bit more difficult to trigger because it doesn't move. You have to tilt your controller until it gets like gets not nice and small and starts vibrating and you need to hold it there for a bit longer than usual. But eventually, after a bit of a cutscene, we'll end up at the observatory. Now once we're here, we basically need to find a bunch of tape recorders. So in this first tower on the right hand side, you'll notice the signs there. I looked at the first one. The first one is on the steps of this tower. I'm making this nice and quick because it's very simple. You basically need to make your way to each tower and trig uh, trigger the tape recorder or the uh, cassette recording that is there. So in this second one, just to the left, in this little building here is the next tape recorder. Um, I'm sorry if this is a bit rushed, <laughs> but uh, those first two are nice and easy. Then we are going to make our way up the road to the third tower. So we go up the steps on the right hand side and turn right, go to the back of this tower and there is like this area with all these candles, I think it is, or, or cones and lights and all sorts. On the table there is uh, the third tape recording. Then we can head back down the way we came, down these steps. And further up, we've got tower number four. So uh, <laughs> I'm moving quite slow now. Okay, we've got all the lights leading us to where we need to go. This is pretty much just finishing the story, to be honest. So the next one is on the table there, pretty clear to see. I'm not sure if you can go to the final tower without grabbing these tapes, but they do count towards the completionist trophy. So you do need to grab them, whether they're mandatory or not. Uh, the fifth tower is further up. You'll see all these hanging monitors and the tape recording is right there, and that is the Completionist Trophy. So, congratulations if that has popped for you. Hopefully it has. If not, uh, maybe you need to follow the guide again, I don't know. Um, if not, you might want to still carry on, because I think you're allowed to miss maybe one item, or possibly two, so if you make your way up to the final t uh, tower here... Now this tape recorder isn't... you can't access this. I pressed X on it anyway but there is a final motion event. Now, if you did miss one item, maybe this event will pop the trophy for you. But basically, this is going to result in a cutscene and then the credits. And then, of course, during the credits, 
we are going to have the end trophy pot for completing the story. So that's the first playthrough all done with guys and we're about to move on to the second one. So once you get back to the main menu you can start a new game during which we're going to earn the final three trophies. Radio Enthusiast involves triggering all of the orange radios in the game before doing anything else. We need to avoid the few silver radios in the forest type area, as well as all other objects or events in the game that require interaction. So in other words, it doesn't matter if you trigger proximity events when you walk past them, you can also open doors and gates, and naturally looking at some of the books or maps on your way through is unavoidable of course. But you need to make sure that you don't activate any of the motion triggered events, so hold your controller steady if you have to walk past them just in case, and make sure not to interact with any phones, TVs, monitors, microwaves, pretty much only use the X button to open the doors and gates you need to get through, and to trigger the orange radios. Once we've earned Radio Enthusiast, we'll be setting things up for Open Ended, which involves reaching Steven's bunker at the end of the game without completing any of the other story arcs. This should be nice and easy, because we'll already have made it to Little Tipworth without triggering any of the main story events, so we'll just need to activate all Steven's motion events to open the bunker. Then before entering the bunker, you can upload your save to the cloud if you want to save some walking, then we'll quickly go back through all the shortcuts for the backtracker trophy, before returning to Little Tipworth, or retrieving our uploaded save, and entering the bunker to finish open ended. Okay, so the first radio we need is in the building just behind us when we start, you'll remember this from the start of the first playthrough I'm sure. So trigger that, but nothing else in the room. We're ignoring everything but the orange radios. So we're going to walk right past the phone here. Now it's very important that when you get to this first motion trigger event, do not trigger it, because usually you would use this to open the gate, but we want to open it with the X button. So just use the X button to open the gate and make sure you don't accidentally tilt your controller too much and accidentally trigger that event. So we're going to carry on round to the right to make our way into Yorton. Now the next, uh, the next radio is going to be in the garden of the pub here, the bar. So we can't actually make our way into the garden from the outside, so we're going to need to go through the bar, out the back door here, and then turn around to the right and head into where all the, kind of, uh, the tables are, and underneath this umbrella is our second radio. Now we can head back through the bar because we're going to be heading into the house opposite. So this is the one that we approach from a different angle, but if you go in through the, the driveway here where the jeep is, in the garden, next to the deck chair is the third radio. Now we're going to be making our way further up the road, obviously past this motion event outside the store there. We're going to make our way past the turning there, just on the left we've got Badger's Loft. But the house on the corner here, again we're approaching this from a different angle, so go through the gate. And you'll remember this is the house with the football in, or the soccer ball, <laughs> and the radio is just next to the wheelbarrow. Now from here we do need to make our way out the back gate, and you'll remember the tractor. So cross into the field here all the way back to where the tractor is and on top of the barrel we have the next ra uh, sorry the next radio I was going to say radiator then <laughs> that would be a bit random wouldn't it anyway we can leave out through the gate that we came in through and back through the garden of the house here and I believe we're going to be heading up to the left and you remember that we've got the brick houses on the left hand side not this one with the bike in but the next two, and we have the caravan or the trailer in the driveway of the house on the right. And this is going to be where our next radio is. So once we leave here, we're going to head straight over towards the park, basically. There's the garage on the left, here's the park with the, uh, the ride that we had to stand on for two minutes. And the pub's just ahead of us, the bar there. If we turn to the left, do you remember the alleyway that goes between the blue and the white houses? If we go into the blue house's garden, 
and into the greenhouse we've got our next radio. Now we can exit and carry on down through the alleyway and that was actually the final radio in this area. So if we make our way back to the road you'll find the doctor surgery here on the right and on the left there you've got uh, the house just next to the garage. But at the top here we're actually going to be entering the second area via this road here. Uh, this is a different route to the one we took previously on the last playthrough but if we just head up through this main road into the forest and the first radio is going to be in the tree house of the, of the house on the right hand side. So don't worry about that proximity event that triggers as we enter the house. Those are fine. You can trigger those. They're unavoidable basically if you walk past them. But the radio is here in the top of the treehouse. Now if we leave the treehouse and carry on up the road, you'll probably remember the next one. It's another one that we're going to approach from a different angle because we're not needing to go off the main road very much. So we're going to be reaching this next one, which is actually quite a long way down the road. That's why I've sped this up considerably. So basically just keep walking down the road and eventually you'll get to a bridge. This is the little bridge here that goes over the water and you'll remember the bus stop on the right hand side and the radio is on the bench there. Now again, we've got a little bit of a walk to, uh, to go through. Got another event there on the bridge that will happen automatically. You can ignore the trains on the left hand side, just keep walking down the road. And our next one is going to be in the garden with all the beehives. So you'll remember the house on the right hand side. This is the house with the open garage, but ignore that. There is a radio in the garage, but it's a silver one and you do not need those radios. In fact, they will ruin the trophy for you if you do activate any of them. So in amongst all these beehives in the house on the left hand side is our next radio. And there's actually another radio in the house itself. So we're going to enter through the front door here. We want to go to the left and up the stairs. And this, this radio I don't think is actually required for the trophy. If you remember from the first playthrough, this is the one that we can't trigger ourselves, but it does, uh, does get triggered during this proximity event. So I did decide to wait around because it's not going to ruin the trophy, so it's better to be safe than sorry. And the trophy did still pop, so it doesn't matter, you know, you can... Um, you might be able to skip this one because you're not actually activating it yourself, but it's on the table there, so if you wait for the event to play out, Steven is going to turn the radio on himself and it's better, like I say, better to be safe than sorry, just make sure you do that one just in case. Now the next one is in this house with the red car in the driveway. It's going to be upstairs. Wow, more sirens. I don't know if you guys can hear them, but during my recording of this commentary there have been three sirens. Must be something going on nearby, I don't know. Maybe it's rapture. <laughs> Anyway, head upstairs in this house, and this is the room with the radio and the two monitors and the map. So just trigger the radio that's on the seat there on the armchair, and that's the final one in the forest area. So we can leave this, uh, this house now. Uh, last time, sorry, getting tongue tied. Last time we went straight ahead through the blue door. We want to turn right back into the room that we came through to start with and exit out the front door here just because it's more kind of, it's more of a direct route. You know, we don't need to take the path that we took last time following the light and everything. Uh, we're just gonna carry on down the main road. And the next radio should be audible from the main road itself. So on the left hand side, you'll remember the gate here. This is the one that we approached coming back up the road in the other direction. But if you head through the first gate that you come across on the left hand side, there is a radio just to the left there on the seat. Now we don't need to make our way up to all the barns and everything, just go back to the main road and carry on down and you'll reach the corner where the road swings around to the left and there is the white house uh, just ahead of us here. The next radio is in the shed of the white house. Again, we approach this one after climbing down the ladder from the barn uh, further up. So we came up through the pathways in the rear, but if we just enter from the front this time, the radio is in the shed there.
then we can exit back the way we came. And this time we're actually going to turn to the left at the road and we're gonna go in through the gate that's open in front of us. And we don't need to worry about the event at the tree, but we're going to head straight across all the way to the back of the field. Now this is the path we followed. Remember we had the tarpaulin, we came from that end, you know, from the right hand side. And this is going to take us over the planks that, uh, that create a sort of bridge across the water here. Just here, look. And once we cross the water, we are going to activate the radio that sat on the picnic uh, sheet. What do you call it? I don't know. It's been a while since I've been for a picnic. <laughs> um, anyway, we can head back the way we came and you can use the white house and the barn as waypoints because it's quite hard to see when you're walking through the wheat. So just head straight for those two buildings and it will take you back to the open gate. Now we're going to carry on all the way up the road here. And I'm trying to remember, I think, oh, on the right hand side, just after that event triggers, there's a gap in the fence. You want to head through this fence and head for the barn. And this is the barn with the ladder. So we're going to climb up the ladder and grab the next radio. Once we've done this one, we're going to be heading for the van that had the chad on it. Again, we're going to be approaching it from a different angle. So basically uh, climb down the ladder and then head for the opposite side of the field. There is a turnstile over here. And once you climb over it, you can sort of turn to the left and make your way through all the wheat. And eventually you'll see the blue van. You'll have all this bric-a-brac on the right and the opening through the gate. But just ahead of us here is the van with the radio in the driver's seat. And that is actually the final radio of this section. So we're going to make our way back up to the road, just head for that barn in the distance. I think that leads us to the gate here. Yep. Yeah. And we can turn to the right past the blue car. And this is going to lead us up to the caravan park or the camping site. So once again, we're going to make a, a journey sort of clockwise around this area. Be very careful though, as we enter, there is a motion sensor event. So you could accidentally trigger that if you tilt your controller too much. But if we turn to the left, we're going to be circling the area just like we did before. And the first radio is going to be on the left hand side, just before the tennis courts, just next to the BMX little ramp section where the two bikes were, where these kids were obviously playing before they were taken. Now, if we carry on around, there's going to be a bit of an edit here, I think. Yeah, so we want to turn uh, not the first left to those first uh, caravans. We're going to carry on around and pass the map, pass the phone. And then we want to turn left here through the little gap in the fence, just past the phone booth. Now, there are all these tents and caravans here. And the first caravan on the left hand side contains our next radio. I think there are only four in this uh, location. Now we can head back to the road in this direction. There are going to be three roads. There's one there. Then there's the main road through the middle. There's one that heads up to the right. We want to turn left and carry on around where the arrows are pointing. This is sort of the road that we took kind of on and off during our first playthrough. Anyway, once we get to this map here, there is going to be uh, the area on the right hand side. Do you remember? Oh, no, are we going left first? Yes, yeah, sorry. Turn around to the left first and uh, head down to the far end caravan just near the gate that leads to the water, which is actually a lake. I thought it was the sea, but it's a this is Lakeside Caravan Park, isn't it? So that's our next one. And then if we go back to the main road, and into this area of caravans, you'll remember there's one on the table. This is sort of the inside of the corner where the road makes a sharp right. Just opposite where the playground is, which is down to our left. Anyway, we can carry on walking now because I believe that's all the radios for the caravan site. So keep walking back up to where the main hall is and then we're gonna turn left to exit out the way we came. There's the main hall on the right. 
If we turn left, now you can, if you want to avoid risking activating this uh, proximity event, or this, sorry, <laughs> this um, motion event, then you can take the pathway to the right. You know, before the motion event, there's a little path to the right, which is, uh, you know, the path we took to get to this road originally during the first playthrough. But either way, we're going to carry on, you know, up this road, which is going to eventually lead us to Little Tipworth, the final area of the game. So we only have, I think, four more radios to go, and that should be Radio Enthusiasts. It's such a beautiful game, the lighting and stuff. I took a moment to take a look there because it's really nice when it gets to dusk, you know, and evening draws in. <laughs> All these dead birds on the floor. Anyway, when you get to the uh, the bus stop on the right hand side, just past Forley's or whatever the warehouse was called behind us, then that is the location of the first radio. Now we're going to make our way all the way up to the railway station. So keep following the road and then swing off to the right here, just where the train is. You should know it by now. You probably know your way around. We've been walking around long enough. But we're basically going to follow the track itself all the way down to the left. And when it gets to a dead end or when it's sort of blocked off, this is where, you know, we mentioned this is the radio next to the little van. This is where the quarantine is kind of uh, stopping people from leaving the village or the town. I got a bit stuck there, but we're going to carry on down this road. This is taking us past the, uh, the wholesalers on the right. We're going to swing around. This is the cafe and the gas station on the right hand side. We are going to enter here and just on the right next to the little shed is our next radio and I think there's one more. Yes, we want to carry on back up the road here. That's the steps. You know, we're we're coming in a different direction this time. But we want to turn down to the right. This is basically leading us to the bunker. So you remember this area. Enter through the entrance. The bunker's just behind us to the left. And the final radio is underneath this little roof here. So now what, what we're going to do here is basically trigger all of the... Uh, story events for Stephen, we're going to complete everything except for entering the bunker. So what we need to do, actually, you know what, uh, are we doing that? Yes, yeah, sorry guys, I'm getting a bit lost. Yes, we are going to trigger all these story events. Sorry, I've got my uh, text walkthrough written in a slightly different order. But basically, you want to just find the main road that goes up through the middle of the town. And we're going to make our way all the way back to uh, almost the Forleys, but we're going to the house here that's under construction or being renovated or whatever, we're going to make our way inside the house and the first motion event, obviously you want to make sure that the Radio Enthusiast trophy has popped before starting this, but this is the first event in the room to the right. So now we're going to leave the house and we want to make our way back to the train station. There's going to be an event in the actual train station building. So again, we're making our way back the way we just came, all the way back up to the top of the area. I haven't sped it up too much. I mean, some of these sections do go on for a bit. Um, I've kind of done most of it sort of triple speed if it's a long walking section, some of it's like double, all of it sped up a little bit at least. But anyway, I don't want you getting lost. I don't want to do it too fast and make it hard to follow. But once we do make it back up to the train station, head inside the building, and this will be the next motion event. Now we can leave the, the train station. Again, it will be very dark for a while, so give it a few moments until it lightens up. We're going to leave down through the road or down the road we came. I tried to cut the grass there, but there was a fence in the way. And we're going to head back towards where the gas station is, but we're going to the wholesalers. Uh, something Valley, something Valley wholesalers it is. I've turned down the quality of the, uh, the preview I'm watching of my recording just so that it doesn't lag at all. Um, otherwise the commentary will be out of sync. But if we make our way into the warehouse of this wholesalers, that's going to be our next motion triggered event. Okay. Valley Farm. I just noticed it there. Valley Farm wholesalers. Anyway, if we make our way back up towards the 
uh, you know, past the cafe there towards uh, the train station, but we're going to turn right down towards where the bunker is again, down this pathway, but walk past the entrance to the bunker. There it is there, there's the entrance. We're going to walk past down to the bottom of the pathway, and this is the motion event that was the final one we did during the last playthrough. This is going to be the one that basically unlocks the bunker for us. So I will explain at this point, guys, that uh, although I don't upload my save here, I do recommend, you know, waiting for the game to save. Make sure that you see the save icon in the bottom right. And this is going to kind of give us an anchor point and you can quit out of the game then and upload your save to the PlayStation Cloud or to an external hard drive or whatever you like to do. So that's going to mean that when we do the next trophy, which is all the shortcuts for Backtracker, we're not going to need to walk all the way back here to Little Tipworth to finish the game. You're going to be able to re-download your save from the cloud and just plonk yourself right back here so you can literally just walk into the bunker to earn that final trophy. So guys, from the event we're going to head straight forward and make our way to Tipworth and Haverton. And uh, we need to make our way through the gate on the right hand side of this building here. Now the gate that counts as the shortcut is this large gate that we just made our way through there. That's the first shortcut which is locked. All of the shortcuts are locked until you reach the next location. So you can go back through them but you can't use them from the start of the game. Anyway, from there we're going to basically just follow the path all the way along and eventually reach this barn which is then going to lead us down to the main road if we keep following this track. I accidentally shut the gate here but turn left at the main road and then turn immediately right into this field. This is the field before the wheat field and if we go all the way to the back and reach the fence here you'll eventually notice a gap in the fence just at the top and this is the location of the second shortcut. So we need to head through this big double gate again. It's not really a double one, but it's a long one. <laughs> it's a wide gate for letting tractors through. So that's the second shortcut, but we're not actually going to be following that shortcut all the way up. We're going to come back down and keep following around the outside of the field. This is the, uh, the wheat field here. <laughs> and uh, this is the route that we've taken several times for other items over the, uh, the planks there, across the water. And this is going to eventually lead us to the barn with the caravan outside. So when we reach this location, just on the right where the blue tarpaulin and the big tire are, is a gap in the hedge. And we go through that and then over the turnstile at the back. And this path is going to take us to two more shortcuts. There are five in total. So at the junction, we want to head straight on first of all. And this is going to lead us to another gate that we can go through, so just pop through it. This is actually your turn, so that takes you back to the start of the game. And then make our way back and take the other route this time, so we're going to be turning left because we've turned around. And there are also two routes that branch off from this path itself, so when we get to the fork in the junction, you can take either one first, both of these lead back to the forest area, uh, Tipworth Forest, so you head through the first gate, uh, you may have noticed these gates on your way through the game, but they would have been closed until, you know, we got to the end. So now we're going to turn left and head through the final gate here, the fifth one. And this is going to pop the, uh, what's it called, the Backtracker Trophy. There you go, guys. So for those of you who did upload your save earlier, you'll be able to download your save at this point and simply enter the bunker. And that's literally all you need to do to finish the Platinum. So for those of you who are doing that, I want to say a big thank you for watching. This, this uh, guide took a lot of effort, a lot of editing due to all the varying speeds and everything. So I really appreciate your time watching it and I really hope it helped you earn the Platinum nice and quickly. Don't forget to leave a like and please think about subscribing if you are a trophy hunter. I do tons of trophy based content on the channel, putting up videos almost every day. So thank you very much for checking this one out. For the rest of you that are, uh, you know, still following this guide because you didn't upload your save, just follow the route I take. We're basically whizzing all the way back through the game. And this is obviously still the farm area. I always forget the name of it, but uh, 
eventually we'll reach the uh, caravan park which we don't need to enter we can just bypass it so there it is on the right just carry on along this road and eventually we will get back to little tipworth and literally all you need to do like i mentioned before is enter the uh the bunker so i'll be showing you how to get back there to be honest it doesn't take a huge amount longer if you didn't upload your save so you know, if you didn't, don't feel bad because the amount of time it takes you to kind of quit the game and then go to your options or your settings and download your save again and then reload it back up. To be honest, in that time, you could probably have made it back here. Obviously, we're moving a lot quicker because of the editing, but uh, uploading your save just saves a few minutes of, uh, of walking. But you'll notice all the lights again. They're leading us back to the bunker. So take this track to the left, just opposite the railway station. And we're not actually going to need to complete the game this time. We literally just need to enter the bunker itself. So we're going to pop inside here and uh, make our way down the stairs. And the trophy will pop any moment now. So for the rest of you that are still watching, I'm not going to prolong this with a long outro. But I do want to say once again, thank you very much for checking out the video. Please leave a like. It really does help the video get seen by more people. And uh, there we have our final trophy that should pop the platinum. So like I say, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great week and I'll catch you very soon.